Okay, so I just wanted to make a quick video to talk about something that I ran into the other day that I thought was kind of interesting. So recently I was tasked with creating a call out on a trigger and then saving the response of that call out in a field on that record. Uh, the first thing I tried to do was create a future method uh, which would do the call out itself, but I quickly realized that I couldn't save the response from that call out on the record when when doing it from a future method. And after some Googling around, I realized that that's just the nature of the future method itself and how it is asynchronous. It doesn't actually allow you to, to go back and update records. So after some more Googling around um, and some trailhead, I realized that I could simply just place the callout in a queuable class and have the update trigger called the queuable class itself. So to demonstrate that, let's jump into the account trigger here. Um, this is the account trigger. It's just called account trigger. Um, I have basically just for demonstration purposes, have all the different events defined. Um, the one that we're interested in is this section of code right here. Basically on before update, we have this method um, that's get, that gets called from the account trigger handler. It's called set description and all it's doing here is just uh, passing in that list of accounts. In the account trigger handler, we have two methods. The first one is the set description, which as I said, just receives that list of accounts. And the next line, I create a brand new list of accounts, which is called accounts to update. And all we're doing basically uh, in this for loop, we're iterating through the, the list of accounts that we received, and we're checking to see if this field called description is blank on the account record. If it is, then we're going to add it to that accounts to update the list that was created up above. Once it's done iterating through that for loop, we're going to check to see if that list contains any accounts. If it does, then we call this get description method and we pass in that list of accounts to update. In the get description method, uh, this is where we actually um, call the queuable class and in and as well, um, we use the system.nq job method and we pass in the thing that we want to queue up. In this case, it's an instance of the class account queuable. Uh, we are passing in that list of accounts, which as shown earlier, simply just has um, the list of accounts that had a blank description field. In the account queuable class, uh, first we, the first thing we need to do is we need to implement the queuable interface as well as database allows callouts. Now for the dem purposes of the dis this demonstration, we're not actually doing a call out. Um, as you can see on lines 11 and 12, I'm just pretending to do a call out, but technically, you know, uh, because all I care about is actually just populating the field. But if we were doing a call out, it would be an HTTP request. But just to keep this simple, um, I'm pretending to do a call out and then just logging the results of that call out in this string response variable. So the way this works is, the queuable interface has one method that you need to define, which call, which is called the execute method. Uh, this is um, basically what will get executed when the um, the account queuable class is called. So in order for us to um, get the accounts populated from that callout, uh, we have to pass in the list of accounts. And the way we do that is by defining the constructor, which is just account queuable. We pass in a list of accounts and here uh, we are just um, setting the the private account list that we created up here to the accounts that were passed in. Once we have that in the execute method, we just iterate through those accounts. And like I said right here, lines 11 and 12 would, if we were actually doing a call out, it would be an HTTP request to the endpoint. Um, we would parse out the response. And then once we're done with that, we would set the response um, to the description. With that said, it will iterate through the entire list of accounts that we received. And once it's done, we're simply going to just update that list of accounts. So that's how we would go about actually doing a call out from a trigger and then save the response from the call out as well. And to demonstrate the functionality of this, I've gone ahead and opened up an account. So in this case, it's the Burlington, Burlington Textiles Corp of America account. And I've also gone ahead and opened up the Apex jobs. So just keep in mind, um, the last time a job was executed was a queuable, uh, 4.13.2021, which happened to be yesterday. So 
The moment that I go ahead and update any of the fields on this account, our trigger should fire because it's set on the update uh, on the before update trigger. So if I go ahead and increase the annual revenue by a bit and click on save, that trigger should have fired and it should have queued up the queuable class. And as you can see here, um, it's pretty quick. So um, now the description has some text. And if we jump into our Apex jobs and hit refresh, you'll now see that you know an, an extra job has been completed, uh, which is today. And again, since that trigger, the, the way it's been uh, built, the, the logic um, rather, it, it will only ever enqueue this account queuable class if the the list of billing details passed in to the trigger um, has a blank account description, as you can see here on line six. So if we were to go ahead and do another update to this record, well, now the the trigger will still fire because we're doing an update, but there will be no uh, queuable and queued on the system because the description already has uh, content in that field. So if we go ahead and save, and if we jump into our Apex jobs and hit refresh, we'll see that there has been no additional job submitted. But if we jump into our developer console, uh, we can still see that, you know, just a few, a few seconds ago right here, uh, we went ahead and did another refresh. Now, before we wrap this up, uh, I do kind of want to go through one last thing, and that's the concept of the whole recursive check. So if we jump into our account trigger, we can see here that we are doing, we have our logic inside of the before update, uh, which, as you may be aware, um, unless we handle it properly, this could lead to uh, basically a recursion. Um, you know, basically, the, the issue would be, you know, we're, we're doing something on the update trigger. And if we change something on the count that could lead to an, you know, the, the update trigger firing again. And then you're just caught in a loop of updating of a trigger updating and it just keeps firing over and over again. Uh, there are various ways to get around this. In my case, uh, what we're doing here is basically we're always checking to see if that this account description is blank. If it is, then we're adding it to the list. And if that list is not empty, then you know the, the account queuable class gets queued up to fire. Um, I don't think this is perfect, but I, I think this is good enough to where, you know, uh, theoretically, at least, the account description would only be blank once, right? After the account queuable class runs, that description would be filled out. So this wouldn't meet the criteria and the account queuable wouldn't be fired again. So there would be no recursion. Um, I have seen, especially, um, I have seen other ways where people handle this. Uh, one notable one I think is, well, they will create a separate class. For example, I have this recursion check for account and you know it can be as complex or as simple as you want. In this case, I just have a public, public static Boolean variable called called. It's set to false. What you would do in the trigger is you're basically checking to see if it's been called. The first time around, you know, it'll be false. So it'll go through here. And then what you would do in the, in this case, in the account queuable class itself is set it to true. That way, if your logic, you know, ends up triggering another update, the second time around, the variable would be set to true and it wouldn't fire at all after that. So just, just some things to think about. Um, so probably something worth Googling as well. But yeah, that's pretty much what I got. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, if, this is a, if you think this is a good approach or not, if you guys have a better way of doing this and uh, feel free to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.